Shalom, Shalom, I'll run your back. Another quick lesson. It's going on to a uh, <clears throat> couple of videos I've seen on uh, TikTok and online, IG. Uh, basically, um, uh, the things is going on down in Atlanta, man. It's a lot of things is kind of kind of fishy going on in Atlanta right now. And I'm going to show the videos. First and foremost, I want to start this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Mahavra Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Shalom to you, Akim and Akwaf, that believe and have faith in Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Uh, first video uh, is going into uh, what's going on downtown in Atlanta, man. All right, Atlanta. They done broke into the Wells Fargo. Woo, they went to that in these streets now. Look at them. Damn. They built the ATM machines. Woo, Atlanta. Get it together, Atlanta. And it's kind of fishy because these things happen right after uh, a lot of people wouldn't able to get their money out of different banks all over town, man. So, so it, 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 Esau got something up his sleeve, man. We can't put our fingers on it right yet, but it's something wild going on that is going to bring in a lot of um, legislation. A um, couple people thinking uh, martial law. Uh, more likely, it's, it's going to be the collapse of the dollar system, which um, I mean, we don't know for sure. But uh, just just a quick lesson going into you know the signs of the times. This is Dabu Seven. I want to share with you here some updates and some footage out of Georgia after this night of rage took place in Atlanta where Antifa members started to Molotov cocktail police, police cars, bust out windows, and they say that a small group was caught with explosives, although they do not say exactly what those explosives were, if they were fireworks or other devices, and multiple people arrested in this event. This is a look at what it was looking like. Now, all of this sparked after a confrontation between police and a protester where shots were fired and an individual was killed. Classic Antifa chants there. You can see a, a large mob here. And on top of this, we had a shooting inside of California that took the lives of 10 people as well. All of this being connected to the so called Night of Rage. Again, this is a look at Atlanta. We may see more from here. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dabu7, for more live updates. You'll find links below. That is actually kind of dangerous. Yeah, as you see, man, Dabu Seven just uh, updated, you know, Antifa, which uh, we ain't seen them in years, and all of a sudden it came out of nowhere. And I just like getting this guy's uh, perspective on different things. Um, he not saying he has any inside information or any clue of what's going on. He just he gives a good uh, insight on um, the common sense questions, in other words. Hey, man, I was doing this investigation on this Atlanta situation. The activist that was killed it was a non-African-American activist. Pay attention to that. And these people who are doing the protesting and looting and marching are non-black people. Right? The cars, police cars are being burnt, the stuff being broken into. If y'all pay attention, these, these are white folks doing this. You know what I think? I think this Atlanta uh, a whole debacle was staged. I think the black people in Atlanta are being set up to take the fall and be, be the fall guys for the actions of the non-blacks that's happening. If you paying attention, some people writing BLM on, on, the, on, the, on the stuff that they tell on the, on the buildings and stuff and they white people. But they got masks on. 
right? Now they already saying Atlanta is this high crime area, right? Let's get let's, let's think about it. They already got Atlanta paid as this high crime area. So now with the death of this activist, it will already look like the bombing and looting and, and the 775 will be done by black people. So if they wanted to usher in martial law, right, they would use a situation like this that's not even being called by the black people to come in and later and put a force down on the black people. Because the black people have not been falling for the tricks that the, that the government has been using to get them out into the streets, right? To get them to riot and do all this stuff. None of that's been working. So here's what they're doing. They're sending in plants. They're sending in a, 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 a story, a fake story about an activist getting murdered, right? <coughs> Whether he did or didn't. And then all the white activists, they marching and stuff and all that, ah, setting stuff on fire. This is all staged. This is all an attempt to bring martial law into Atlanta to rid the street. Now you got to remember they just they 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 they're not accepting uh, housing vouchers in Atlanta anymore. So now they're trying to create the chaos of homelessness in Atlanta. Now you have people who've been given five day eviction notices to get out, right? Now what better time to bring the law in on these people, right? After they ain't got nowhere to go, right? And just and, and make them blend in with everybody else that's committing all the crimes and then blame it all on them. I'm telling you, people of Atlanta, y'all being set up, and y'all don't even see it coming. All right, so I mean, <clears throat> if they set up or not, it really don't matter because it's all the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. First scripture I want to get is Second uh, Timothy three and Second uh, Timothy's three and this verse one. The point it says, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come." So we know we clearly in the last days and these perilous times are coming, man. And they can't be prevented. As you see, um, though, like a guy brung out that um, they're not using uh, Atlanta vouchers, man, to to um, to um, basically for Section Eight and different projects to have to you know get in um, to get housing, man. So it's going to create a a, a big um, hole in um, in homelessness. In other words, you're not going to be able to have these uh, houses that you. Uh, that you was able to get, you know, on these different programs from the government. And the Lord is taking everything away, man. We are truly in the last days, man. We're in the last times. And um, you can clearly see it. So uh, these things are staged or not, but they're trying to destroy the banking system. Uh, he, like he said, Antifa was down there. You heard about them in a couple years now. This is us, uh, Ecclesiastes of Rock 36. And I'm just starting at verse 1. It says, Have mercy upon us, O Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai. Of all, the most high power of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. So the Lord's going to seek, we're praying to the Lord to seek this destruction so we can get our kingdom, in other words. But for the most part, man, send your fear upon all these nations, man, to seek not after thee. It says, lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. So we're asking the Lord to send, go ahead and bring this destruction on these people, man. They're not seeking after you, man. It says, O thou waste, uh, waste satisfied, sanctified in us before them. So the Lord is sanctified in us before them. So the, the men of the Lord are being sanctified in front of these heathen, man, and the two-thirds of our people. So be thou magnified among them before us, and let them know thee as we have known thee. So we fear the Lord, man. We know the, what the Lord is capable of doing, man, and what the Lord is going to do, man. And that's the and that's the uh, the hopeful elect. It says, um, and let them know thee as we have known thee, that thou and it's like it, that there is no power but only thou, O the most high power, show new signs and make your strange wonders glorify. It's like it. it says, show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm. That, that they may set forth thy wonderful works, raise up indignation and pour out wrath and take away the adversary and destroy the enemy, man. And that's what we're asking for, man. We're asking the Lord to raise up and destroy the enemy, man. Bring wrath. They want to destroy it. We want them to destroy it even faster, man. 
Because this is the, the indignation of the Lord, man. The, the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And we asking this, we asking the Lord to do this soon, man. Now, because it's it's time, man. All the things, all the things on the table, man. We know that the um, the W uh, E F ended Friday, so it, it don't tell them what what uh, what they you know had conjured up at that uh, meeting, man. We seen a couple of glimpses, but those background background um, meetings, we don't know what they was doing, man. And this might have been one, because I know they definitely want to crash this this dollar system, man. Because the other nations are not using the money anymore. This is um second second um second uh, Ezra six, and I'm gonna start at verse fifteen. It says, And therefore when it speaketh, but not a slaka, it says, and therefore when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end, and the foundations of the world of in the foundation of the earth is under is understood. Let me read that again. Let me make it clear, man. Let me slow down. I always get ahead of myself when I do these videos. It says, and therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid for the world, for the, like it, for the word is of the end and the foundation of the earth is understood. It says, why? Because the, the speech of these things turbuleth, turbuleth and is moved for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. So we know that the end must come, man. Or the end must come to pass. It says, And it happened that when I had heard it, I stood up upon my foot, my feet, and hearkened. And behold, there was a voice that spake, and, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. That's the Lord put the Spirit on us, man. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. So the Lord is bringing, coming close, man, to, to bringing all these judgments on the earth, man. He's drawing near. And we, we definitely see that, man. And there's no way around what the Lord has prepared for this place, man. It says, verse 19, it says, And I will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of the of zion shall be fulfilled that's talking about uh, esau edom man but all the shit that he does all the judgments that he's done be fulfilled and it's the time is coming man to be fulfilled and that's the, and that's what we're living in right now it says and when the world that shall begin to vanish away and that's uh, and that's the world that we're living in now man, esau's kingdom shall begin uh, sh shall begin to vanish shall be finished then will i show these tokens the books shall be opened before the firmament and they shall see all together so we see the end all together man the hopeful elect see exactly what's coming and what uh um, what the lord has in store for this place man and it's not good <laughs> it's great judgment and um these things we, we try to preach to our people to repent before the time comes man because you can, like you said, the, the books are open, man, before the firm, and that's now. Man. We can understand these scriptures, man. We can literally go into the Bible and understand the scriptures and what, what we can look at the time frame the Lord has set up for this place. And that's now. The time of the end is now. It's not going to be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and they got all these agendas for 2030 and 2025 and all this shit, man. The time is now, man. I mean, you can't say exactly it's tomorrow. But we know it's, it's near because the Lord is, is moving, moving fast, man. This is uh, Jeremiah 42 and um, verse 14. And that's what we want to get for our people, man. The pearly, them, pearly, them pearly mercy gates are closing, man. Saying, uh, verse 14, it says, saying no, but we will go into the land of Egypt. Let me get 13, it says. But if ye say we will not dwell in this land, Neither obey the voice of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, your power, saying no, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, no, no, nor hear the sound of trumpets of the trumpet, nor have hunger, but of bread, and there will like, and there will will we dwell. And that's talking about these people dwelling in America, man, where they ain't seen no destruction, no nothing ever touched this place. And they think this place is safe. 
They don't see that the judgment of Yahweh by Shemi al is against this place, but they don't want to hearken to the Lord. And that's not the Lord physically coming down and speaking to you. It's the men of the Lord that make the lessons, go on the highways and byways, when all the social media is teaching you this word, Yahweh by Shemi al has opened up to us to bring forth to you. But the people want to dwell in Egypt, man. And Egypt is America, man. Let me get that real quick to make the point on that. Because uh, America is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Uh, Re Revelation is 11 and 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. And America is the great city, Babylon the Great. Which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So this place is Egypt as well, man. This is well as Sodom, man. The, there also our Lord was crucified. So this place is also called Egypt in Sodom. It has a lot of nicknames, man. And this is without a shadow of a doubt, Egypt all over again. Salakia. This is definitely Egypt all over again. So we, we, are, we are going on the highways and byways and prophesying these things because the Lord put it on our spirit to do these things, man. From the apostles and elders, great millstone on down, man. This is not a coincidence that we are preaching this gospel, man. Not like no TikTok pastor or these pastors you see online and want to speak all this bab psycho babble bullshit, man. We are teaching you the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh not our own thoughts, man. Verse 15, it says, And now, therefore, hear the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh you remnant of Judah. Thus saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel, the northern and southern king, if ye holy set your face to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. And, fa and the famine thereof ye were, were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. So the Lord telling you, if you don't repent and come back to me, Everything you feared in Egypt is going to come on you, man, and you're going to die. It says, so shall it be with all the men that set their face to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by famine, by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. So the Lord is telling you, if you don't repent and come back to him, he's going to bring all these destructions upon you, man. <clears throat> and there's no way out of it. So that's the reason why I want to bring the scripture out, man. As you see, these, these perilous times are coming. Esau is bringing all these different judgments. No, he's slacking. I ain't going to say he's bringing no judgment. He's bringing no judgment at all. But he's bringing forth the judgment. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Not, not him. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah's judgment. So basically, the Lord is telling you, if you don't want to repent and come back to, to him, you're going to remain in, these, in this destruction that he's going to bring on the entire planet, but mostly Babylon the Great. So he's giving you a, a way out, man. And like I said a, a little while ago, I said that these these pearly mercy doors are closing, man. And it's the time to get out. It's the time to get out of uh, this, uh, this this destruction that's coming and repent. Verse 18, it says, For thus said Yahweh by Shem Yahushua of hosts, the power of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt and ye shall be an execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach and ye shall see this place no more. And at this place, we're not going to see this place no more. Babylon, the great e Egypt, spiritually Egypt again, we're not going to see this place anymore, man. But like I said, the Lord continued to stick, stretch his hand out to, to pull you out of that, that fire, man. Because he just said, this place is going to be an execration and, a, and an astonishment. Let me just get that word real quick. Uh, execration. Look up. Let me make sure I said it correctly. Execration. Execration. Uh, quick definition. A curse. Feel or express great lofty, loft, lofty, lofty for a curse, swear. Let me get it in a blue letter. Just to 
make sure that's exactly what it is in the Hebrew. On the the um, strong concordance, and that's Jeremiah forty two. So the Lord telling you, man, he come come out, man. He's, he has the prophets and the teachers and the elders from the apostles and the elders of the great millstone down trying to pull you out of this fire, man, before it comes. And once he let loose, man, there's no way to to repent when it's too late, man. And Jake likes to be late. They be late, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to everything. This right here you gonna be, you can't be late on. You got to know beforehand. You gotta know beforehand who gonna be in the club. This is um, strong, uh, strong accords. H, H twenty, H twenty three. Yeah, H strong accords. H twenty three. Oath, oath of covenant, curse. So you are gonna be a curse here, man. And the definition that I just read was was correct. A curse from the Most High, from men. So you're gonna be execration, man. You're going to be a curse. It says, ye shall be a curse and an astonishment. And like dude was saying that uh, these people are brighting um, BLM on, on different different buildings, cars, and different shit, man. They're burning them down, man, trying to put the blame on you jakes. So this, these, these scriptures are plain, man. They're plain and clear, man. If you understand and you just pay attention to what the man of the Lord is bringing out to you, man, you will understand clearly and repent. He says, and ye shall be an execration and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh have said concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. So he's warning you, don't go and don't, don't join yourself into this, this place, man. Don't join yourself into this place. And that's Revelations uh, 18 real quick. The Lord said, come out of her. And that's what we want you to do, come out of her. Because this place has no more this this time the the time is the borrowed time it's on man it's that's that time clock is done man it's 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 done we don't know when that hourglass gonna end where is it real quick uh it says come out of her we be not partakers of our sins I know it's right here I don't wanna Oh, let me get it right here. Um, Revelations 18 and 9, it says, And the kings of the earth have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her and shall bewail her and lament for her when they see shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. That's not it. Here you go. And um, this is there. It goes. Salakia is four. Revelation eighteen and four. Salakia. That was you know, both of the points was good. It says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, "With the come out of her, for her people." Salakia. It says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her." my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And I just read the plague down here. In one hour, great Babylon, one hour is going to be judged, man. The judgments come. So the Lord telling you, come out of her, so you won't be, so you come out of her, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive none, not of her plagues. So the Lord is warning you through the men of the Lord, come out of her. Come out of, come out of her mentally. Don't be joined to her. Not, not leaving and going to another uh, another uh, country. Come out of her mentally. Because our people have been joined to Babylon the Great, so they took on the, the ideologies and, and the thinking of um, of America, man, Babylon the Great, the whore. So we got to come out of her mentally. And that's what the Lord is telling you to do, man. Receive, uh, receive the word that the men of the Lord are preaching to you and repent. And that's that simple. It says, uh, verse 19, it says, And Yahweh Hashem said concerning you, 
O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. We warn you, don't go into Egypt, may come out of her. No concerning that I have a a a abolished you this day. For ye dis dissembled in your hearts when ye sent them when you sent me into the lock it. Let me slow it up. Let me start that again. It says, verse 20, it says, For ye disassembled in your hearts, and ye set me into the into Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, your power, saying, Pray for us unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, our power, and according unto all that ye, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, our power, shall say, so declare unto us, and we will do it. And that's what we, we're doing there, man. We 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 proclaim everything the Lord wants you to do to see uh, the to uh, uh to get out of judgment, and now I have this day declared it to you, but ye have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua your power, nor anything for ye for which He has sent me to you. So you haven't obeyed nothing the Lord has said to you, man. You put it off, man. You putting it off. And, and the time is coming, man, where you're not going to be able to put this time off, man. 22, it says, Now, therefore, no concerning, because no certainly that ye shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place whether ye desire to go and to sojourn. So you're going to die in the place where you desire to go, man, and sojourn there and stay there, man. So you you desire to go here physically and mentally into this place where the Lord saying, Come out of her mentally so you won't be partakers of a judgment and you don't and you want none of it and that's talk, i'm talking about you two-thirds um this is going to be destroyed and judged in babylon the great because it's the time of the, of the lord's judgment on on um this sinful kingdom man the scriptures say the sinful kingdom have reached into the heavens man and the lord has heard heard the judgment man it's just like it has um heard um heard our our, our prayer unto the to y'all by shemal shah this is Psalms 59 and verse 1. It says, Deliver me from my enemies, O power. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from the bloody men. So those men are setting Jake down there up by putting BLM and doing all these things at different banks. Jake ain't doing that, man. Jake would never go. Man, it's lucky. I ain't gonna say Jake would never go into a bank and do that. But for the most part, they're terrorizing that place and turning it up, man. And, and, and uh, Atlanta is m mostly known for uh, being a so-called black state uh, city, man. And these things are, um, they, they say Antifa down there doing and destroying the place. They want to bring judgment on Jake. So they bring, uh, if they bring martial law, whatever they do, man. It's all for to set up and, and surround Jake, man. And these things are going to come to pass because the Lord warned you of these things, man. It says, verse 3, it says, for lo, they lie in wait. For my soul, the mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgressions, nor for my sins, O Yahweh by Shem They run and prepare themselves without my fault. See, they 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 prepare themselves against you. You ain't did shit, man. You think you just down and living your life working and shit, man. But these people got a, a, a agenda to to finish, man. And they almost there. It says, awake to help me, and behold. It says, "Thou, thou, therefore, O Yahweh, by Shem Yahushua, power of hosts, the power of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not, be not merciful to any wicked transgressor." Salah. So we asking the Lord, the men of the Lord asking, "Don't have no mercy on them, Lord. Bring judgment, man." And we pray for this daily, man. But Jake, I, I want to get one more for you, man. Just to, just for you to understand that these things that we're doing are not, not just for us; it's for you as well, man. And I'm speaking about the one third, the men of the Lord is are, are, are preaching these things to you for you to be saved. This as well as we trying to be saved, man. Acts three and verse nineteen it says, "Repent therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, that the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, man." It says, and he shall send Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Hamashiach. Which before was preached unto you. So we preach Yahweh Shah unto you to repent and come back to him, man, before the, the judgment comes, man. But Lord, when it was edifying, I'm in it there, man. Shalom. Shalom.